How's it going, everyone? Andrew Pillick here on the Andrew Pillick Hockey Channel for the first podcast with myself and downtown Stephen Brown. How's it going, buddy? You know what, Andrew? It's going really well. I mean, we had some uh, technical difficulties to get this show started off, and maybe that's a sign that we shouldn't be doing this. But you know what? We're just going to ride it all out because, you know, we got a lot of stuff to say. Yeah, we, uh, we've been wanting to do this for a long time, and yes, there's been some technical difficulties, but... Um, a lot of people had a lot of questions for us in the last live stream we did after the Leafs, unfortunately, were eliminated by the Boston Bruins in round one of the Stanley Cup playoffs. So we decided it was time to answer those questions and a series of questions through podcasts. And uh, I think that we wanted to just answer probably some of the bigger questions right off the bat because there's going to be a ton of stuff going on with the Leafs in the offseason. Of course, this is a huge offseason for them. So... Um, basically we're just going to be going over some things and you guys will get this podcast hopefully once a week. We'd like to be able to do that. Both of us are pretty busy, but, uh, you know, we, we want to be able to get this done. So I guess we can just talk about what's going on right now and, and what's going to happen in the off season. And it's kind of been kickstarted a little bit by Chris Johnston. He was on the Steve Dangle podcast, another podcast, cheap uh, plug for them. And I, I'm sure they don't need it cause they're, they're quite popular, but, um, there was some discussion about deals that might have happened at the NHL trade deadline and this past deadline and everybody, you know, wanted something to happen after Jake Muzzin was acquired, which is hilarious in itself. But um, what are your thoughts in the comments? Because basically the comments were that the Leafs had something brewing at the NHL trade deadline and it was supposed to be a big name. So what are your general thoughts? You know, when the Leafs lost the series to Boston, I looked around the league at other teams that made trades around the deadline, you know, Vegas being one. Uh, they obviously acquired uh, Mark Stone. The Bruins acquired a couple of players at the deadline. And really, the Leafs' trade deadline kind of felt incomplete. I mean, everyone was saying that they should go out and get a defenseman, and, or people were saying that they didn't go out and get a defenseman, and that's just wrong because they went out and got Jake Muzzin. But... To go back on what you were saying about Chris Johnson, it sounded like the Leafs had something brewing in the final hour, but it just didn't come together. And we, we all know that things 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 that don't come together at the trade deadline can always be revisited uh, later on. And, you know, hopefully that can be the case for the Leafs because they're going to need some help on that back end. Yeah, and another big part of that whole quote was that it was multiple moves that were going to bring a bigger move uh, as the next piece. So uh, the the general thoughts on this were that they were trying to move Connor Brown and it looked like they were talking with uh, the Edmonton Oilers because they're trying just about anything to get the Oilers going. They're, they're trying to get, you know, a guy like Connor Brown probably uh, with McDavid, which sounds ridiculous if you're a Leaf fan, but you have to remember there's some previous experience there um and they were trying to see if maybe some magic could go there so who do you think were the players that might have been on the move for me i think it was brown and zaitsev in separate deals to try to clear up some space but i, I kind of wanted to get your take on that i uh, yeah i definitely think it was uh brown and zaitsev that they were trying uh to move and if what ended up happening was i think was they couldn't move both of them in order to make that larger move and i think I think that if Kyle Dubas can't move both of them, he's not just going to move one of them because that's not going to get him to that ultimate plan or that one big move that we were hoping to see and that he was trying so hard to make. I mean, you can't fault the guy for trying. Yeah, I mean, for Connor Brown, it's probably not as hard. And I kind of have a theory on how that might have fell apart because there was belief that this deal was, was kind of close, I guess because uh, it, it looked like Benning was going to be coming back the other way uh, from the Oilers, I believe. He's a younger defenseman. He's a 24-year-old right-handed shot defenseman that the Oilers have on their roster. He makes $1.9 million for this year and next year. I mean, he's a, a fine uh, number five, number six guy. He's not anything that'll knock your, soft, knock, 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 knock your socks off. But for a guy like Connor Brown, I think that... You know, he's a little bit uh, long for this roster. He doesn't really fit in the role that they have him playing, and he can be a much better player with more ice time in a different role on another team. And if, you know, the Leafs can get a guy like Matthew Benning in that's going to help them shore up that top six until guys like Lilligren and Sandin get here, 
then that's okay with me. Yeah. The thing with me was with that deal is I still am under the impression that the Leafs don't want to take on a ton of salary. And and the thing is, even that 1.9, I don't even think the Leafs wanted to take that on. I honestly believe that uh, Dubis wanted to make a deal. And I'm not sure if this is something that, that you would do personally. But because Hall is not getting any playing time, I wonder if Dubis tried to attach a guy like that with Brown to Edmonton to try to like offset some of the salary a little bit more um, to try to get rid of more salary to because Hall's what's his cap at like 675,000 I believe yeah yeah it's 675,000 for next season I mean that's that's not really that much I don't I don't think he was trying to throw in Hall there I think he was just trying to straight off unload Brown for picks and that was it he didn't want to take back any salary like like what you yeah. said um, but with the salary cap going up and players' salaries um, also rising, you have to remember that the amount that the Leafs can bury um, in the minors is a little bit higher. I believe it's about a million or 1.1 million or something like that next season. Um, so even if they were to take on that 1.9 million dollars, I mean it's not that much of a commitment. They could probably do something with that. I don't think that was the concern, but I think Dubis really just wanted picks and that didn't materialize and you could see why the Oilers weren't in a position to not give salary back because they're in a lot worse cap situation than what the Leafs are in right now probably you know out of the teams around the league they're probably in like the top five most troubled cap team out there yeah the the Oilers have a lot of work to do this offseason and that's probably you're probably right like I don't think that that trade would have worked the way the Leafs wanted it to go and of course it's because Brown's salary would probably put them in a little bit more trouble. I'm sure the Oilers have guys that they can trade off, and I'm sure that's something that a lot of people are going to be talking about this offseason as well because that has to happen. Uh, the Leafs are in a similar boat where they have to get rid of some salary as well, but they have a little bit more room. Uh, and then the other guy, of course, Nikita Zaitsev. The other day I was trying to figure out where he could have gone and for what because – you almost have to attach a pick or a prospect or something to remove that that cap uh, to help another team out. If you're going to give them that salary, you're going to have to help them out by giving them a sweetener in the deal. And the only team I was looking at when it came to the salary was the Devils. But I, I can't even see how that would work for them, especially since that they're in another favorable position at the draft this year. And they still have Taylor Hall, who's fantastic, and they have a decent team. So I don't know. Did you have any idea of what they might have done with Zaitsev? I mean, I think I think Ray Shero is a little bit too smart to go for a guy like Nikita Zaitsev. I think he knows what's what and what's up with him and what Dubas is trying to do. I mean, I was looking at some options, and I really thought that Zaitsev to Florida would be uh, a favorable fit. I mean, it's tossed out there with Panarin and Bobrovsky that, you know, Russians love Florida. So, I mean, why not Why not add another name in there in huh. Zaitsev and send him down there? But, I mean, if, if you look at Florida as an option, I mean, they're an in-division team and you never want to give another team in your division a player off your roster because it might come back to bite you. But I almost think that's like an advantage for the Leafs if they played Florida. I mean, they know how to exploit Zaitsev's weaknesses. And Florida's in a position where they just got a new owner a couple of years ago and he's really looking to spend money and they have a lot of cap space this off season and there was a one particular old friend on their roster where i think that there's a couple of crafty ways that the leafs can get rid of zaitsev here um they can add picks and prospects to, as you would say like a sweetener to kind of get them off the books or you could take back a contract and that's obviously the less appealing option because you'd rather just give up the futures and worry about that later so that you have more more time and more flexibility in the now. But also, you don't want to give up too many futures. Because the Leafs, you know, the cupboards aren't stacked. They're not bare, but, you know, it's kind of just average. So I was looking at James Reimer as a potential thing, and I know <laughs> I kind of... Uh, I, I kind of shot this idea out uh, to you a little while ago. Not necessarily having roster on the rhymer and uh, having uh rhymer on the roster sorry uh but just getting his contract and using that as uh to offset Zaitsev's cap hit either by burying him for one season because he has two years left on his deal and then buying him out or buying him out straight away 
because that would only incur about a million dollar cap hit and that would sure up a lot of things for the Leafs. Yeah, it's definitely an option. And of course, you know, it would almost it would almost hurt even more if the Leafs acquired him and then they had to like buy him out and get rid of him. I think that would really sting because I'm pretty sure a lot of us are Reimer fans and uh, I I'm thinking that it, it would it would hit us pretty hard if something like that happened. But I Wait, personally I mean I mean it would hit us pretty hard, but for Reimer that would almost be giving him a second opportunity because you know, players with cap hits like that that are struggling uh there's not really a market for them it kind of kills their career but if he goes back on the open market you know and gives it a fresh chance maybe he can sign like a league minimum deal and go out and do something like what tyler ennis did this year and revitalize his career and i think that would make a lot of Leaf fans happy Yeah, for sure. I would definitely be happy for him, and, I, and that does make a lot of sense. But I don't know. It, it it would be it would be a really weird situation. I think that the Leafs are um, actually a little like I'm on the other side where the the prospects and picks thing. Like unless you're not giving up too much, uh, I think that Dubis is really willing to do that. I I can't see a world where he would want to take on a contract um, unless for some reason it made sense for the Leafs. But uh, I just I don't think that it would work. I also don't believe Florida wants to do that. I think Florida this year, and I've gone out and said it, I think Florida really thinks they're getting Bobrovsky and Pinar in, in free agency. I, I honestly think both of those guys uh, could end up there, like you said, but I, I think it's actually a higher chance of that happening than people think. Like, I honestly believe that those two could end up there, and that's why I just don't think they want to spend that money there. They might actually want to go out and get more talent because they'll have a little bit more money uh even after those contracts and who knows like some of these teams are, are going to be looking at the Leafs and going yeah well we could spend our money elsewhere probably uh you guys don't have that first round pick we could use right now uh, you know we'll have to wait another year for it and uh I don't know there, there's definitely a lot of question marks with with site seven and those moves but uh let's talk about the guys that were you know clearing up the space for so obviously the three big names Marner Kapanen and Janssen do you see all three of those guys getting locked up or do you believe that one of them is going to be gone or multiple um uh no there's there's not a world where I can see all three of them being back on the Toronto Maple Leafs next season and I and I and I think that's really disappointing as a fan because you see what Janssen was able to achieve after he came back from injury and you see what Kapanen did the first half of the season and you're really excited about that. Those are two young players that change your team and that add a dynamic that uh, most teams don't have. And apparently the Leafs don't have enough depth anyway. And getting rid of depth is just going to hurt that situation. Um, but I think the the likelier of the three to be traded is Andreas Janssen just because he's the oldest of the bunch. Um, and he doesn't play on the penalty kill. Uh, which was a huge weakness for the Leafs uh, in the playoffs and going down the stretch as well. So I, I can I, I can see Kapanen um, locked up on a more conservative deal, like something like a bridge deal, something like 2.9, 2.5 for two years or something like that, even, or even on a one-year contract. You know, he can sort of bet on himself like what Janssen did this past season, and I think the Leafs would prefer that because it would give them a little bit more wiggle room. And then Marner's obviously the big one there. But I think we'll we'll get into that a little bit later because there's a lot more to divulge there. Yeah, I honestly, I see your point with Kapanen on the penalty kill, but I honestly think he's the guy that's going to go if any of the three are going to go. The reason why I say that is because I think the Leafs know that they can, you know, try other people on the penalty kill. I mean, they already have Marner and Hyman there that do pretty good jobs. I mean, a lot of these, you know, problems on the penalty kill, you kind of have to to lean on your defenseman a little bit too. And, and I and I, I know Hainsey and Zaitsev have been decent on the penalty kill, but, and you know, some in some stretches they've been good, but I just, I believe you got to get better guys killing penalties altogether. It can't just be your forwards doing everything and you can't always blame the forwards either. And I think the Leafs have other options to, to put on that penalty kill anyways. Um, like guys like Moore and, Uh, if Ennis somehow ends up back on this team, which I don't believe he will. But 
Uh, I think that Kapanen, his name is probably going to be out there. I can see Carolina maybe getting back into the mix there and seeing if if they can acquire him. Uh, I think that they were already willing to give up one of their defensive pieces, and I still think this offseason they're going to be willing to do that. They're going to want more scoring, uh, even though they're doing quite well in the playoffs. Uh, I I don't know. I feel like Kapanen just has more value to a lot of teams, and I feel like the Leafs can get Janssen to a pretty cheap deal as well. And he looked like he played much better with Matthews, and that's just my opinion. I do believe that Kapanen and Matthews aren't going to be playing together anymore. I still think that Janssen is going to be with Matthews next season. So I don't know. It's going to be tough, man. And uh, like you said, like Kapanen kills penalties, but I just think that Janssen has more chemistry with Matthews. And at the end of the day, they're going to be looking at that and going, well, this is Austin Matthews. Janssen kind of works with him. Kapanen might be the guy to go. I think with players like like Austin Matthews, you know, there's there's going to be a bunch of players that are going to develop chemistry with him. I think if you want to put Austin Matthews in that tier of players that we all want to put him in, like uh, Matt Sundin is a great example, um, in that he had a multitude of different wingers all throughout his career and managed to find success with them. There's to me, you know, what makes an interesting show is not necessarily two people agreeing with each other the whole time. And I think I'm going to have to strongly disagree with you here in saying that they should trade Kapanen over Andreas Janssen. I mean, in the right now, it makes more sense to trade Kapanen because you can get a better asset for him in return. But I think that's why you hold on to him because he's the player that's worth more and if you look at what the Leafs have and what they're developing um I think Janssen is the more expendable player I you we were having this conversation last week on that other live stream and you you keep wanting to go out there and make this huge splash and I just I just I just think we're better off waiting I think Sandin and Lilligren are going to take us to the promised land and I think we just have to allow them to let that happen and if we're going to go out there and trade Kapanen for a guy that can help us right now, I think you're just taking away ice and an opportunity for them to step in later in the year. Yeah, the thing is, though, with the Leafs is I think that the turnover on the blue line is going to be much more than people are expecting. Uh, and some guys that you think are going to get a lot of minutes may not get those minutes under Mike Babcock. And that might that's another podcast we're going to have the Babcock talk. But um uh, I just, I don't know. And here's the thing. I want all of them to stay. Like, in a perfect world, I want Captain Janssen and Marner all to be on the team next season. Like, I don't want to get rid of any of them. But you have to look at the blue line and think, man, like, these guys are RFAs. Maybe we can go to a team that has an RFA defenseman or, you know, you were bringing up some names of defensemen that maybe were healthy scratches or just guys that aren't fitting into the system on another team. And if you can give up a guy like Kapanen, you can get back a pretty solid piece. Like, I really don't think under Mike Babcock, guys like Justin Hall or Rosen or any of those guys are going to get significant time with the team. Like, I honestly believe that he likes his horses. He likes his, his you know, veterans. Like, he likes his Hainsies and he likes all those guys, which I can almost guarantee you this offseason, they're going to have that talk and Babcock's going to want Hainsey to stay on this team. Like, I can almost guarantee you he they're already talking about this. He wants Hainsey back. He's going to show him all the plus minus and, oh, he, he, you know, he helps on the penalty kill. And that's going to be a roster spot taken away from somebody else because you know that he's going to be playing with Morgan Riley and the same song and dance is going to happen all over again. So the blue line's going to be losing Gardner. You're probably trading Zaitsev, hopefully. And, you know, after that, you've got... Riley, Dermot, and uh, and Muzzin. So a lot of holes, man. You know what? You, you kind of, you kind of touched on Babcock and his tendencies and stuff. And I think you know w- we started that conversation a little bit, and that could be a whole another podcast by itself. But I just I I feel it's important to bring this up now and saying that Kyle Dubas is a big believer in having everyone on the same page, and. Sheldon Keefe and him are on the same page with just about everything. Yep. Kyle Dubas loves Rasmus Sandin. Sheldon Keefe loves 
Rasmus Sandin as, as that reflects in his minutes and his usage in the Calder Cup playoffs. And he's excelled in that role. He's really, really killed it. With another interesting prospect that the Leafs have and another former Sue Greyhound, uh, his name is Mac Hollowell who's a right-handed shot defenseman. There's a lot of people that are very, very high on him. And you know what? They're smaller defensemen, and that's not really Babcock's game. But at the same time, I mean, you need everybody on the same page here. And if we're going to value Sandin as that, you know, really valuable asset, then Babcock needs to as well. And yeah. I, I, keep, I keep saying if we just tape the blue line together, for the first 50, 60 games of the season and wait till those two Swedish boys are ready, I think that's going to really, really help. Those two players are really, really going to help this team and in big ways. And I think we have to let go of that fear of the unknown and just let them take over, just let them take the reins the same way that we let those that huge influx of rookies that we had in the 2016-17 season and that 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 was a lot of fun i don't know about you but that season was tremendous all of yep. i checked all the boxes for me in every single aspect and you know i really just want to have that much fun again as a least fan because i don't know about you this season was not a lot of fun it just no. seemed like it was one thing after another yeah no there was a lot of things that uh that kind of put a bit of a sour taste in your mouth when it came to you know, the Nylander conversations and all this other stuff. And by the way, the Nylander conversation, again, is going to be its own podcast. Same with probably Jake Gardner conversation. We just kind of wanted to, to break the ice with this one here because we don't want to get too in-depth and too crazy in the first the first podcast. But, um, yeah, no, I... No, you know what, Andrew? I want to get crazy. Let's <laughs> fire Mike Babcock right in the first episode of the podcast. <laughs> That's what we're doing here. That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> it's been said. It's over. Downtown Stephen Brown has evolved into his full his full character. Yeah, um, that's it. Just clip that 10-second thing and put it everywhere. Yeah, and then and then that's all people are going to ever think about our podcast. Man, these guys, they just only have hot takes. Here, wait, wait, hold on, wait, hold on. Here's another clip for you guys. Mike Babcock is the coach for this team. There, I've said both of them. So you know, whatever happens next year, it's you know I was right. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're you know you're shooting your shot and you're right both ways. Um, but no, getting back to uh, I, I honestly, and I've told you this before, I think that Dubis and Babcock and Shanahan and all these guys are talking right now that going into this season, that and I know this is such a dumb thing to say, but because of you know, outside noise, even though they say they don't listen to it, it always impacts somebody. And I think that they kind of owe it to this team to try something. They're, they're going to have to do something. I really believe that they are going to bring somebody in. Do I think it has to be a monster piece? No, but it has to be somebody that can at least play a pretty good defensive role. And I honestly believe it could be another top four guy. It just depends on who they move out, who they have to give up, because they already did give up quite a bit for uh, Jake Muzzin. Obviously, they gave the rights to um, Dursey. And uh, they gave away, uh, oh my god, what was the forward's name again? Um, Carl Grunstrom. Yeah, Grunstrom, who looks great with LA right now. Uh, obviously, they're out, but you know he had a good end to his season there. And the first round pick. And uh, Grunstrom was tough because he's a guy that plays with grit. People were saying he was the, the Leo Komarov replacement, which is hilarious. I think Grunstrom is a great talent. I think um, the Leo Komarov replacement was Trevor Moore. I don't know. That guy's the, that guy's nuts. I yeah. Mean, he's like five foot eight, but he plays like he's six foot eight. Did you see him in the playoffs there? He was, you know, he had a couple of trips against Jara and he's throwing his weight around like yeah. it's nothing. He knocked him on his on his ass a couple times, which was hilarious in itself. But um getting to like this the 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 biggest thing here is Mitch Marner and again this is also something because guys this is only episode 1 we don't want to go too crazy into a, a deep dive into Mitch Marner's contract but he's the other guy that uh we we're going to touch on a little bit here basically because all these moves are not going to happen until that guy is signed yeah he's definitely the one thing that is going to hold up everything because 
you know, there's talk of him getting $11 million, which I think is just ludicrous. Even $10 million is a little bit absurd. And it's going to end up being spun into this whole PR thing where Mitch Marner ends up signing for $9.5 million. And he looks like the hero in this situation. You know, maybe Mitch Marner murders Thanos. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, that that is really going to hold everything up. Until that contract gets done... You can't do anything, and I think Dubis is going to be really, really aggressive from between now and the draft to just getting that done so then he can have the conversations about the Browns, about the Zaitsevs, um, you know, potential free agents or other trades and whatnot. Um, I don't know how deep you wanted to get into Marner here because I have some really strong feelings about this that are might be bold predictions, but I don't think they are. I think that we should we should leave the people. We, we'll have a whole thing on Marner. I feel like we should literally leave the people on that, unless it's something that you have to say right now. But no, no, no. no. I'm gonna blow the roof off this place with a couple okay. of things that I have to say about him. See, this is what I'm saying. This is gonna leave people waiting for the next one. We'll literally start with Marner on the next one, um, because I think that we're also we kind of skipped over a name in here that we kind of have to say, Patrick Marlowe. Um, He's 100% a Leaf next year, in my opinion. At first, I thought they could move on from him, but I think it's set in stone. Like Chris Johnson also said, too, like he thinks it's 90% that Marlowe is going to stay. Listen, I think fans are right to be upset with Patrick Marlowe, and fans are right to not like him. But, I mean, for us, we're right in that age range where we, we remember Patrick Marlowe as, you know, that that great with San Jose and that great on Team Canada. And I don't know about you, but when they first signed him, I was stoked about getting that type of player. Not only, you know, his skill set, never mind that, but just the man, Patrick Marley. Yeah. You know, because that guy's, you know, he's a really polarizing figure. He just, he's a dad. He doesn't care about anything. He just goes in there and does his stuff. You know, he takes his ice baths in between periods. <laughs> he... He's his own man. He does whatever the hell he wants. I was really excited about that. But, you know, the salary cap is a thing, and that is something that they're going to have to consider doing. It's going to be a tough conversation. But ultimately, yeah, that Patrick Marlowe is 100% back on the Leafs next season. Yeah, I mean, I can I can also, like, I, I'm pretty sure we, ha we had a conversation right after he signed, and I was asking you about the deal and how it was structured and stuff because I was, like, freaking out. Because I was like, yes, I'm okay with this. And I was arguing with everybody that the three years would be fine. No big deal. And now I'm kind of going back and thinking, oh boy, this is what some of the people were warning us about was the cap trouble. Um, you know, people say Lou Lamarilla was undefeated, but this deal was kind of kind of crap if you if you kind of look back at it. But um That was that was the same summer, the Zaitsev and Marlowe. Yeah. And that's a those, that's those a tough are, summer. Those those are two con I mean Marlo, I mean, he scored two goals um, or two or three goals against the Bruins uh, the, the first time around. Bruins 2.0 series, I guess, if you want to call it that. Yeah. He was good that season. He was good this season until he wasn't. And then he really, really wasn't. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't want him playing with Austin Matthews. Uh, that's the that's the thing. I think he's gonna be a firmly fixed to Nazem Kadri. Who knows? Maybe Nazem Kadri even isn't here this uh, next year. That's that's all another podcast by itself too. That's what I'm saying. And like we got a lot of stuff. Over, that's man. a podcast. My face is red right now. That podcast. It's gonna be like the Canadian flag in the background. <laughs> your headphones. It's just. It's gonna be nasty. <laughs> it's gonna be nasty because Nazem Kadri is a player that I love. Me and too. you you love him too, but he 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 you know he did a big no no, this yep. the, this this playoffs and he really really screwed us. Yep. Um, oh, but boy. I mean Patrick Marlowe is a player that you hate to hate. Yeah, I I'll never hate Patrick Marlowe. I'll never hate him. Um, I still love the guy. I still think he's a great leader for the team. But you know, hockey's a business. And the Leafs are going to have that conversation if they haven't already. I'm sure they haven't because it's so early, but I think that there's going to be a, a tough conversation between Dubas and Marlowe saying, listen, man, you know what's coming. Like a trade 
is is a possibility if you want to waive your no trade clause. I don't think that's going to happen, but um, I wonder how far he'll go with that conversation. I can't see him wanting to buy him out. Um, well, if he if he buys him out, it's just the six point yeah, two five million. Cap it stays on the cap counts regardless. Yeah, this, this season it doesn't spread out over multiple. Yeah, years. so I guess that wouldn't even matter. So they won't buy him out, but. Um, They'll probably they, they they can't even they can't even put him on waivers either because he doesn't just have a no trade clause he's a no move clause yeah that's that's the thing it's gonna be really tough it has to it's a trade or bust like you, you can't really do anything else with him unless like he retires and all this other stuff and like because if he retires the the money would come off the cap would it not or no no it doesn't it just stays right on there because so it's you... the 35 and older rule right yeah it's the, those nasty 35 right plus contracts it's yeah the same thing with kobolchuk in la oh and that's gonna be a brutal situation for them if if he gets traded oh boy now he's um, gonna retire again and go back to the KHL. Could you out. imagine? <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I don't know how long we've been recording for, but um I don't know how much longer we needed to go with this because I think we covered a lot of topics right off the bat. And uh the the reason why we didn't get into the Marner contract and you know a deep dive into Kadri and Babcock and stuff is because the beauty of this is this is only week one and we could have talked for the next four hours, but Unfortunately, um, we don't want to uh, be up that late and, uh, you know, uh, be sitting on a computer all night. So we, we want to be able to to give you guys a podcast every week. So we're, we're hopefully going to be doing that. And I would say we're going to because, you know, both of us talk a lot and uh, that's why we wanted to do this. So I don't know if there's any last things you wanted to say to the to the people here. I just wanted to ask, obviously, you a question, Andrew, but also to the people. You have to ask yourself questions here. Do you trust Brendan Shanahan? Yep. Do you trust Kyle Dubas? 100% yes. Do you trust Mike Babcock? Uh, I'm on the fence. So, I mean, if you have your trust in those first two guys there, you have to imagine that that third guy falls in line as well somewhere down the road. And I really trust Kyle Dubas, and I think he's a man of action. Yep. You know, he's not just that 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 cute innocent guy with the thick framed glasses and the nice hair. You know, <laughs> he's not Becky here. This is Kyle. And <laughs> Kyle's a man of business. He's going to go out there and he's going to do some things that are really going to change this team in good ways, I think. Yeah. So I think we just we just have to wait and be patient cuz I think he is a man of action and good things will come with patience. I would 100% agree, and I think that's a great way to end it. That sounded too perfect. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the first edition of this podcast, and while we're recording this, we don't have a name for it. So once it gets best posted... Best podcast. <laughs> the best pod, the best Leaf podcast. I think that that would probably irritate some people because we're already Leaf fans, and that already irritates people. So, um, Matthews is better than Line A podcast. Yeah, yeah the Matthews over Line A podcast. <laughs> I Can wouldn't you... trade Mitch Marner for Connor McDavid podcast. <laughs> There's Leaf fans that wouldn't do that, man. <laughs> I know. It's, it's... That's so silly. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's a, that's another thing in itself. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you're new, make sure to subscribe, like the video. Uh, we'll have all of our social media and stuff down below. So you guys can hear more from us, even though you're probably going to be sick of us by the time you hear these podcasts. So um, thanks again. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in uh, next week's episode. Take care.